Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for August 16th, 2013. This week's topic, trading the long-term trend line. Long-term trend lines on weekly charts can be spotted by drawing across the major tops and bottoms on the chart. Now, breaks of these multi-year trend lines often lead to long-term trend reversals. As buyers, we're most interested in breaks of downward trend lines, and these are best when there is a rising or double bottom leading into the break of the trend line. Now, if we look at the three-year weekly charts of stocks that have done well for the week, we can often spot these initial trend line breaks. So here's a chart of Hewlett Packard going back three years, and you can see that it was a pretty disappointing stock from 2011 until late in 2012. Now, right at the start of 2013, it broke that long-term downward trend line, and it also did so from a rising bottom. I've defined that in green. And the result is that Hewlett Packard has been one of the top performing stocks in the Dow 30. Here's another example. Trend lines don't necessarily have to be up or down. This is a stock that was in a sideways trend for a long time with very strong resistance at $1.50. And the break through that $1.50 mark signaled the start of a new long-term upward trend. What's important is that that resistance had held up for a very long time. I could have actually drawn the red line going back all the way into 2010. And that made the break through that line of resistance very critical. And that's really the essence of these long-term trend breaks. We're looking for breakouts and, and moves through trend lines that are really significant relative to the long-term picture. And the longer the trend line is held up or the longer the line of resistance is held up, the more important these trend line breaks are. All right, let's get into this week's analysis. And there's been a lot of concern that the market is topping out, that the market is destined to move much lower. And certainly that is possible, but at this point, it is not probable. And the reason is the upward trends, even the short-term upward trend, is still intact. Now, I've drawn the steeper upward trend line above the longer-term, more shallow upward trend line, and both of those have not been broken. It's only a very short-term upward trend line that was broken this week, and that sets up for probably more weakness in the near term. And given that we are coming into the fall when markets tend to pull back, September tends to be the weakest month of the year for the stock market, it could very well be that we're going to see some more weakness out of this. And so I think some caution is warranted, but what this chart is showing us right now is that the bull market remains intact. The very long-term trend lines are still in place. The TSX benefited last week from strength in gold and silver and oil and is starting to move up towards that long-term line of resistance that I've drawn in red. And what's perhaps most important is that it has formed a rising bottom. And so it seems that the Canadian stock market may be on the beginnings of a long-term trend reversal, or at least a break out of this very boring sideways pattern that we've been in for some time. I think it still has some work to do, but that work could be done in just one or two weeks. If we can get through that line of resistance, well, then the market has a good chance to go up toward that $20.5 mark on the TSX ETF, T.XIU. Treasuries moved much lower again this week. That means interest rates are rising. The thing about bond prices is as bond prices go down, interest rates go up. And this chart, being a bearish one, indicates that interest rates are rising in the U.S. in the terms of treasuries. And that tends to filter down through the entire bond market. And really, there is no major support until just below 95 and probably more like 90 on the TLT here. So there is quite a bit of downside here in treasury bond prices and therefore quite a bit of upside in interest rates. And so uh, keep that in mind. That certainly affects things like housing. It affects financial stocks. Obviously it affects housing negatively, but it actually affects the financials positively. And we'll see how this all plays out. I think one of the reasons why 
the Canadian market is benefiting is because commodity prices are improving and commodity prices are improving because there seems to be stability coming into China and that shows up in this chart which is the chart of the uh, China ETF FXI which broke its downward trend line this week now it did so after rising for five or six weeks and that increases the chance that we'll see a short-term bit of profit taking the market tends to second guess these trend line breaks if the move into the trend is up and we certainly have that in the FXI but I do think that the market is telling us here that the situation in China is improving and that is a positive for uh, commodity producing, per, uh, producing economies like China like Australia which have really been in the doldrums for some time. US dollar has been falling and it's a bit counterintuitive because um, uh, US dollar is falling and yet people are talking about tapering. Well if there is going to be an end to the printing of money in the US or at least less stimulus in the US you would think that the US dollar would rise but it's actually been falling into that anticipation of uh, possible tapering starting in September so the market is telling us that tapering is not really that likely and gold is moving up which is a sign that the US dollar is weakening um, but in the near term we are pretty close to some support on the US dollar and so the US dollar could maybe have a bad week still but it should bounce soon and that would be a negative for commodities so we've got a bit of conflict there in that gold and silver prices are getting better a lot of commodity prices are getting better and yet the US dollar should bounce back soon which would be a negative for those things and that's why I'm not overly optimistic about gold I think there's a trade in gold we've been making that trade on a few stocks but I don't want to be uh, all in on gold or silver right now because of the likelihood that the US dollar will bounce. Well here is the chart of the US dollar and we talked about the trend line break four weeks ago and that has continued this week and it looks to me like this will continue to rally up toward that longer term less steep downward trend line and that's pretty good upside certainly you can play the bounce on a lot of these gold stocks and we've seen some pretty good bounces in the last week on the gold and silver names but uh, I don't want to get overly optimistic here because there's still a lot of pessimism to be overcome in gold and of course in silver. The oil market benefiting from the problems that exist in, Egy in Egypt and uh, we're getting a break out of the flag pattern this week that points to higher prices for oil. It's a negative for the economy of course. So higher oil prices makes uh, consumers have less money to buy other stuff. Um, but my only concern with the oil chart is it's predicated on tension in Egypt, tension in Syria, that sort of thing and these things tend to work themselves out over time and it's not really I think a long-term trade to think that the long-term picture for oil is higher. Short-term definitely looks like oil can move higher from here and when you watch the news about what's going on in Egypt you certainly get a sense that it has uh, uh, still lots more work to be done in that country to get things fixed. Egypt not a huge oil producing economy but they have the Suez Canal which is a big transportation hub for oil that has not been hindered as of yet but it's certainly a possibility if civil war breaks out in Egypt. So ratings I've got a neutral rating on US stocks I do think that there is a pullback underway right now um, but my long-term picture remains bullish for now. Canadian stocks neutral but I'm starting to get a little bit more optimistic as we push up towards that resistance we could see a breakout there. Gold, I mean, I think short-term bullish, longer-term bearish, and so I sort of split the difference and call it neutral. I think if you're a short-term trader, certainly uh, play these stocks from the long side in the near term, but don't buy into the long-term trend reversal yet because there's a lot of work to be done on gold. Bullish on oil, uh, again, largely because of political issues in the Middle East, uh, in Egypt, which of course is, some would say, Northern Africa, but... Um, what matters most is that price is moving higher and, and there's a trend there that uh, we can't ignore no matter what the reason is. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for August 16th. Have a great week in the market and trade well.